Hey, good morning YouTube. Brody with Groovy Cycle Works here. Today I wanted to tackle a quick video that answers a question that I get quite frequently. And that's, how do I prepare titanium so I can have the best conditions possible for welding? When we look at a titanium bead, it should be bright silver, color free, smooth in appearance, and gently feathers out to both ends. What we're going to talk about today is a process that I have in place that helps ensure the greatest probability that that first portion of that formula is correct. And that's the color free. So much of that comes down to proper preparation of the material before we actually put heat to it. So let's take a look real quick of what I do from selecting tubes through the process to getting it ready to weld. So we're going to start off with selecting some raw tubes to begin with. Uh, the majority of the titanium comes in straight gauge long lengths that we then have to cut into the appropriate size lengths for our tubing. Uh, they're fairly dirty when they come in and we don't do anything to help that, uh, at least not during the fabrication process. We start adding uh, all kinds of contaminants like the cutting fluid that you saw there on the cold saw and uh, cutting fluids that are added to our tools such as our hole saw here where we're mitering the end of the tube and also present when we're using uh, plunge tooling like this center drill uh, to begin to make our water bottle boss holes. So all of these different liquids that facilitate the machining and fabricating process for us keep adding irritants and contaminants to the actual tubing. In addition, uh, we add quite a few things ourselves. You'll see a lot of Sharpie marks all over the tubes. So as I fabricate, I'm constantly using my Sharpie to mark points of indication, uh, <clears throat> set datum points to help us. Uh, so we need to get rid of all that. So our cleaning process begins uh, with a little bit of mechanical effort and a little bit of chemical effort to follow that up. You see that we had some acetone, some paper towels that are fairly lint-free, gloves, and Scotch-Brite. And what we're doing right here is simply getting to the ends of the tubes where we're going to be doing most of our welding, and we are removing the hard oxide layer from the titanium. This is a naturally developing layer that protects the material, uh, keeps it from decay, uh, but it takes a mechanical effort to remove it so that we can consistently and cleanly weld through it. So we're cleaning up the ends of the tubes with the Scotch-Brite and then additionally using a brand new stainless steel wire uh, brush to help get inside the tubes and make sure those are all nice and clean too where our heat and juncture is going to be. That gives us a good once over on the critical areas. Uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab some acetone and we're going to remove some of that Sharpie that we've left all over the tubes and give it a gross decon. So really important, put on your powder-free uh, latex gloves or if you are allergic to latex, nitrile gloves at this point uh, because you don't want to be working with acetone with your bare skin. Acetone is a facilitator as far as carrying contaminants through the skin and into the bloodstream. So elements that your skin would normally block get picked up like a backpack and carried through with acetone. So it's always best not to handle acetone directly. We're going to get a little bit here on a paper towel. You can see the paper towel is nice and shiny. Throw that cap back on the acetone because it evaporates really quick and give all of our tubes a good wipe down. Uh, we're removing any residual oils, dirt, contaminants, and our Sharpie marks that we added uh, throughout the fabrication process. And you can see as I wipe down this seat stay, what's left behind uh, is a nice shiny tube and a lot of dirty looking ugly stuff there on the paper towel. That doesn't mean our tubes are ready. We got a bit more work that we're going to do. Uh, next thing, we are off to get some hot sudsy water. I like to use a little bit of just regular Dawn dishwashing soap uh, because it seems to cut through any residual oils really well. And as hot a water as my hands can stand. I think I have my hot water heater set about 125 degrees. Uh, so <clears throat> we fill her up with straight hot water and then start putting our parts in. You'll notice one thing is <clears throat> from the time I started with the acetone until you see me finish this entire process, 
At this time, I never handle the tubes with bare hands. Really important, because we don't want any of the oils from our hands transferring onto our progressively cleaner substrate. Um, <clears throat> once I've got it inside the sudsy bath, I'm using that same maroon scotch Bright again, just to give the tubes a good once over, both inside and out. Gonna scrub them real well, uh, and then we're gonna rinse them off thoroughly, uh, just with standard tap water. Longer tubes uh, that I can't reach through like I did on this head tube, I'll use a smaller tube to push the scotch Bright through to make sure I get the interior done. Once we're done washing and rinsing, it's off to the ultrasonic cleaner. So we'll pop the top off the cleaner here and place everything down in the metal uh, mesh, down into uh, a special formulated heated um, bath it goes, and then I'm going to use the ultrasonic usually about 20 to 25 minutes. Uh, I'm in no hurry, I can usually uh, appreciate a break by this point, so it goes through the process and then when it comes out, um, it has used those bubbles and action to clean off as much as it can. I give it a good shake and then we go next door into the Thermo Scientific hot water bath. This is a 15 gallon bath that's filled with distilled water. It's heated and it constantly circulates. So now my tubes are going into this distilled bath to make sure that there are no residual elements from the bathing process that are going to stay on the tubes. Once I'm done with the hot water bath, which I usually let run about uh, 12 to 15 minutes, they go into a stainless steel little basket here. And we're going to take this basket and all of the pieces parts and then head over to the next step, which is our bake box. I just put everything in this simple uh, composite wood bake box with a thermometer. It does have a lid that I put on top of it, and it's heated uh, using a hot air gun. Uh, so this hot air gun will get it up to about 250 degrees. And when I'm all done, you can see our tubes are super shiny. So there you have it, folks. My process for cleaning titanium to give us the greatest probability of having colorfully welds, which means no contamination. Hope you picked up a couple things. Uh, in the next video, we'll talk a little bit about um, actually welding titanium and the purge fixtures, heat sinks, uh, and the different TIG cups and uh, diffuser options that we have that help us to create a 100% enveloping um, cloud of argon gas around the area that we're working so we can prevent any type of oxygen contamination. Until then, have a blessed day.